Well, hello, welcome to part three of my network revamp. And I've got a few more bits since part two. So let's just quickly run through those. I've got another PDU here. This one is uh, it's UK plugs, as you can see. Uh, but on the other end, rather than a UPS connector, this is a standard UK plug on the end there. Uh, this will be going in the rack and it will be for items that I'm not plugging into the UPS, basically, and for those that have uh, transformers on that kind of thing. So that's there. And the reason I'm plugging it in here, even though it's not going into the UPS, is the items will still be either in or on top of the rack. So that's that. I then have a blanking plate. That's a 1U blanking plate because of the way I think I'm gonna lay out the switch which we'll see shortly and the other new item I've got here which is a patch panel uh, now this isn't a punch down patch patch panel but this is a keystone patch panel and what that means is that I have a box here of keystone couplers and what goes on here is that this little coupler here plugs into the keystone patch panel here and then you can plug an ethernet cable in either side of it so it saves having to punch down the cables you might say that's lazy but uh, it just seems like a good way of doing it for me for now so oh, speaking of which of cables I then have got a whole load this is just two that I've pulled out to show you but I've got a whole box full of both lengths of these cables uh, we have on the left here this is a half meter patch cable and I've also got 25 centimeter uh, patch cables as well all in nice red and yeah I've got a load of these these are cheap as chips so um, I've got a load of these and a load of these as well because I'm not 100% sure the lengths that I'm going to need I think because the patch panel is all horizontal and the switch has two rows of 12 ports so I think when I'm connecting them together, I'm going to need some longer leads and some shorter leads. So we we'll, won't really know until I start actually putting it all together. Next, I've got a bag of mounting bolts and screws for the rack, because without these, I'm not gonna be able to put anything in it. So those are the bits uh, that I've purchased since part two with a couple of notable exceptions that I haven't shown you yet, which I come in here and they're inside these boxes. And in this one, I've got a Linksys 24 port, well it's a 26 port actually, because it's 24 ports plus two combo ports. And that is a rack mounted switch. And underneath in this heavy box here, this is a CyberPower PR1000 2U UPS is inside there. And if you want to see, I've got unboxing videos on the channel for both of these items. Now the big news, viewers, is the rack. There it is, it's now in my office. That is not where it's going to go. It's going to be going over in this corner. But the uh, important news is that the uh, trades have been in, that rad's been sorted out, and we've got power down here now for the rack. That's all been sorted out and Let's just have a look at the rack. This is the first time that it's been in my in my office moving here today. It's been sitting in my porch for two months. So let's just actually have a look at the rack while there's nothing in it. Now this is manufactured by a company called ZPAS, Z-P-A-S. And uh, as a quick shout out to them. And they do all sorts of different, uh, different racks. Now I believe that this door, if it will focus, this door will actually move focus oh there we are uh, will actually move you can change the side that the door is on and because this rack is going over in that corner i will probably see if i can change the door around to face the other way uh, so i'll have to have a look at that and just see how easy it is to do that i think you just screw it in there's some screw holes down there so that should be okay but here we can have a proper look now at this one this is the one with the acoustic foam in it and so that should hopefully keep things a bit a bit quieter. Uh, they do versions without. And I was so having a look around before I started recording this because on the other racks that they that they do, you have cutouts. So at the back, if I crawl into the rack here, you have cutouts down here and also on the back. 
and also up the top for you to pass your, your cables through. Uh, and I was looking on this and I was thinking, okay, where, how do you pass the cables out the back, of this, <laughs> out the back of this rack? And after looking around for a moment, I saw that, yeah, if I just pull this back, it's a bit dusty still, but there's no cutouts down there at all, no cutouts up there, so nowhere to pass your cables through. But if I just look underneath this little lip here, you might just be able to see here, there is a cutout and that you can see that some of the acoustic foam there and you've got to, I imagine, actually cut that away somehow to, I'm not sure if this top comes off, I'll have a look and see if the this top comes off, might make things a bit easier. And then the, the cables can actually go out through that up there. I imagine this is all slightly guesswork. And it came with this, which is the right length to go there. And I think that then plugs in or fits onto that, uh, onto the rack there for the cables to poke through. I'm guessing, I'm guessing all of this. I don't know, I've got to have a look. Also, it's come with some feet. I'm not 100% sure whether I'm going to use the feet because I mean, if I was um, on say laminate flooring, um, then it would probably be easier to move the rack using those feet. But I'm on carpet and I think it would be more difficult to move with, uh, with those feet on. So I've got to decide whether I'm going to put those on or not. I'm not sure. I suppose for, for cooling maybe, for, for because that there is a grill and obviously it's not going to let any air in um, if it's on the ground. So yeah, I'm thinking aloud. Anyway, let's have another look round the rack and you can see there you've got two sets of rails as you would expect and these will move. So it's very difficult to see in this dark rack but you can see the uh, it's, it's just bolting onto the side there and I can loosen those and then adjust the front and the back in order to position the equipment exactly where I want to. Now that might not be a million miles away from where I'll have the, the front rails there because when I want to put the equipment in, I want it slightly back from the door because there's going to be ethernet cables uh, poking out of the switch and into the patch panel. So I will want a slight gap uh, in front to allow for that. And none of the equipment that I'm putting in here, even the UPS, is not particularly deep. Uh, and it's worth mentioning at this point that this is what you would class as a, as a data cabinet. It's not a, a server cabinet, which would be much deeper. This is 600 by 600. So uh, if you had like a, a, a proper server putting something like a, a Dell PowerEdge or an X server, or oh, X server, remember those, into one of these, you know, into a, a, a rack, then it would be more like um, 1100 deep, which of course is, it would be just be way too big for my for my office. So th this is really what you'd call a data cabinet. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is this uh, this glass door at the front here. This is um, a sort of smoky kind of uh, glass. It's slightly slightly sort of um, yeah smoky finish to it. I suppose is the best way of calling it. You might be able to see it just there against that wall. And so I'll be able to see the LEDs on the switch through this, but. Uh, uh, it will sort of dampen the, the look of any sort of bright lights as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so there we are, that's uh, sort of a first proper look at the rack and a first proper look for me as well at the rack. And uh, we're now going to try and put some bits and pieces into the rack. That's the next thing, get it into position, get the desk back over where it's supposed to be and then we'll start putting things into it. So that's coming next. Okay, it's the next day. And as you can see, I've got my desk back into position, which is great. And the rack is now in its new home. And I've put a couple of items on top. There's the printer on top there and my Apple's Extreme. I've also got another little box back there, which is the one to do with my solar panels. That all may change. It's a bit messy up there. Uh, on the rack itself, I've sort the door around. So the door now opens that way, the opposite way. And that was a bit fiddlier than, or a bit fiddlier, is that a word? That was a bit more uh, fiddly than I was anticipating. It's one of those jobs where you would probably need an extra pair of arms. That would have been helpful. Now inside, wow, look at all those cables. This is looking like a bit of a mess, but it's going to initially. What I did here was just to set something up temporary, temporary so that I can 
work really for um, to today and, and I can spend a bit more time when I've got you know, evenings and weekends when I've got a bit more time to be able to, to properly put things in the rack. So let's just have a look and see what I've done. Well, you can see I've taken the back of the rack off. This is just to make temporary feeding cables uh, a bit easier. But if I go right in here, you can just about see, if I, in amongst all this spaghetti, if I pull this back, then there is some notches there. Wow, can you see that in amongst all this? Let's just go around these cables. Yeah, that's better. You can see there that there's some notches. Now there's actually three of these uh, going along the back and you can knock them out. I've just knocked out the middle one for feeding cables through. Uh, so that goes underneath the acoustic foam. There's also a notch at the very top that I so showed you from the other side and I'm feeding one or two cables up through there just to the items that are sat on the top of, of the rack. All of this is going to change, with undoubtedly. Uh, I've put one item in the rack, it's the uh, PDU. This is the UK plug PDU, so uh, this is really just a glorified extension lead, surge protection uh, extension lead, but rather than it being outside the rack, it's inside the rack, and it's for items such as these that have uh, little adapters on that are not going to go anywhere near the UPS uh, but it means that if they're plugged in here, they're going to be neatly out of the way. And uh, I, can, I can route the cables, most of which, some will be for items that are inside the rack, but most will be items such as the printer that are on top. Uh, I've also put uh, my RAID, at the moment it's just sitting on the, on the bottom of the rack, as you can see, but that will ultimately be going on to a shelf uh, in the rack. But this is just a temporary setup so that I can, so that I can work today and as I'm putting each item in you know I'm giving it a good clean and I'm just giving it a chance really you don't get a chance in in, in offices uh, home offices to uh, to clean and, and just generally tidy up very much so it's a good opportunity to have a bit of a spring clean so there we are that's uh, that's where we are what's that mark on the door there I'm a neat freak I'll have a look at that in a minute now uh, so the next thing that I need to do really is to have a look at getting uh, the computer back in on the desk over there because there's nothing on the desk at the moment and uh, also uh, start thinking about how I'm going to be putting things in the rack and what, where they, exactly where they're going to go. I've got a vague idea in my mind uh, but uh, I think it's going to be quite fluid. It's going to change quite a bit I should think as I, as I go through the process. So here we are. It's uh, back to the world of spaghetti but only temporarily. Next thing that you will see uh, will be uh, another update with, uh, I don't know, it depends what I do next. So you will find out in seconds. For me, it could be a bit longer. So see you in a moment. Right, I have got a supplementary bit of video to slot in at this stage. I'm just in the process. I've got the UPS out of the box and I'm just in the process of putting it together. And I've put one of the handles on the side there that will be for rack mounting. You can see if you watch my unboxing video, I literally took all the bits out and didn't actually do anything with it. And I'm just in the process of attaching those handles on the front. But something that I noticed was if you watch my unboxing video, I talked about all the cables that come with the unit. There they all are. And there's all sorts of plugs and bits and pieces in there. But one thing I've just twigged that it doesn't come with is a UK lead, or pick your insert name of country here, in order for the uh, AC input to go there. So, I mean, that's not a, a massive problem because um, if you're like me, you've probably got kettle leads just sort of hanging around. I'm sure I've got one somewhere that I, that I can use, but whether it's one that I actually need to use for something else, I don't know, but I may, I may have to then uh, go and get one. Yeah, well, focus, brilliant. But I thought I'd mention that at this stage, that if, you, if you've got this unit, if you saw that unboxing video and you were thinking, I like the look of that, I might get one of those. Uh, you have to, it comes with all sorts of cables to plug into it, but not necessarily uh, one to power it, which is a bit of an oversight, really. I suppose it means that they can package it up and sell it uh, worldwide. I, I imagine that's the reason for it, without having to have the appropriate lead for different countries. Um, and you just plug in a power adapter of your own. I guess that's what, what it's all about. Uh, but I... Right, I found a plug. Sorry, I found a lead. 
what I've done is to take it from my new switch. I've just borrowed it from, from there for now. So I plug that in and it is under there. So let's switch that on. Now it says in the instructions for this that it will it will uh, be charging the batteries even when it's switched off. So, but I think I'm, I'm going to switch it on anyway. Uh, on off. Oh, it's got a little cover over the, which I now can't work out how to, oh, there we go, there we are. A little cover on here to make sure you don't go to DEFCON 3. Oh, there we go, right, so I'm turning it on. And let's have a look and see what it says on the little screen. So actually battery capacity on there is fine. It says that it's fully charged. So that's good. So I don't really know whether I have to plug it in for a full 12 hours. It's set. I just had a look in the book of words to see whether I could work out whether I need to plug it in for 12 hours or not to charge up. It just sort of said that in the factory, the battery capacity could drop. And clearly it hasn't really on here. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'll leave it plugged in for a while. It's not gonna do it any harm. And it's not drawing any power. The other cover's gone off now, it's gone off. So I'll just literally leave it. I know it's uh, working because the little display, uh, the little light is on there, but I'll leave it plugged in for a while and at least I know then that it is definitely going to be okay when I start plugging things into it. And meanwhile, I can work out what lead I'm going to use uh, because clearly my switch is going to be desperate to get its power lead back. Now, I apologise that this video is turning into quite a bitty video with bits here and bits there, but it's probably because it's early days with the rack and I'm, I'm just sort of finding my feet with everything. But something that I do want to sort out is up here this has if you can see that because it's quite dark inside inside the rack there's a fan up there and rather than there's a uh, the end of the the lead here to power it uh, and rather than just having that fan running all of the time i've got this little gadget here which you may remember i referred to right back in one of my earlier videos uh, about the rack about the networking project and this uh, is a thermostat and it will uh, you attach it to the fan and then you can turn on and off according to the temperature inside inside the rack so obviously it all needs to be to be connected in so I've been looking at the wiring diagram and it all seems fairly straightforward um, I've got to put a plug on that end to plug into the PDU uh, connect the fan into the thermostat and then this actually comes with a, a mounting bracket on here and I'll put it somewhere probably just temporary at the moment. I'm not really sure where the best place to put it is, perhaps up near the top heat rises. Right, I've rigged up the thermostat to the fan. You can see it's just hanging. I, it's just hanging. I know it's just hanging, but this is just like a proof of concept. So we've got a plug on the end there, which will obviously go inside this PDU uh, when it's rigged up properly. And there's the fan at the top, which at the moment is doing nothing. And you can see on the top there, although it's upside down, there is a temperature gauge. And at the moment, just here, it's pointing at 30 degrees. And that's quite warm. And that's the cutoff. So it's not actually running at the moment. So what I'm going to do, and because I need several hands to do this, I'm just going to Right, now, I've now turned that down to about 15, and obviously it's warmer than that in here, so the fans come on. So the idea of this, of course, quite simply, is that is rather than having the fan running all the time, uh, I'll set this particular temperature, whatever temperature that may be. But there we are, that's a proof of concept, it does work. And I'll need to clearly rig this up a little bit better, do something, tidy up the cables, etc. Right, so an update now, more time has passed. And here is the rack with some more bits and pieces in it. If we have a look over here, you can see that I've added an extra PDU. The one at the top is just a standard UK plug PDU. The one below it, with nothing in it at the moment, 
it goes into the UPS and that I'll be plugging in various bits that uh, haven't got leads that go straight in the back of the PDU, so straight in the back of the UPS. So I've got my rack shelf in place with my RAID on it and then directly underneath that I've got my uh, UPS. Now the rack shelf is a 4U uh, rack shelf which is just the right height for the RAID and then the UPS is sitting at the bottom looking very nice. i uh, just got the uh, Synology RAID plugged into it at the moment so there's nothing in the way really of load capacity. But speaking of the Synology RAID I'm going to have a look now at the RAID control panel. So this is uh, the software that you get with a Synology RAID. And on there, when you've plugged the UPS into it, into the RAID, we're using a USB cable, then the Synology RAID will know that there is a UPS there. You go to the UPS tab under uh, hardware and power, and you can tick enable UPS. And then as if by magic, it will know that there is a UPS connected. So. Uh, I've got a prop the settings here to say that the UPS itself will uh, tell the RAID when the battery is low and then the RAID will shut itself down. And you can see there that uh, I've got an estimated battery time uh, of low to seconds, so it's going to be quite a while, while before that actually does run out. So that's really good, that's really handy, it means that the UPS and the RAID can talk to each other. Okay, another update, and under the desk I have tidied up some cables, so that's looking a little bit better under there. I've plugged in from the computer and from the monitor a long IEC connector that goes into my uh, UPS down here. And you will also be able to see that I have put the switch in. Uh, looks a little bit untidy at the moment, I have to be honest. The switch and the patch panel are in, yeah, a bit, bit untidy. Uh, also, if we go down here, major update, there's all sorts going on. You can see the RAID that was there before. Uh, I've also got another couple of gadgets. Uh, the bottom one, that one there, is for the solar panels. Uh, and back there, you'll see is my airport extreme. Now, it's a bit odd, you would think, to put my wireless router inside a cabinet. That's not going to help my wireless signal around the house very much. Uh, however, I have a plan, and what I've done is I have gone back and plugged in a home plug adapter. And I've never been a massive fan of these home plugs. I've always had not very good uh, reliability from them, but that's part of the reason. It's really been my own fault. I've had them plugged into extension leads, and you shouldn't do that with any kind of home plug adapter. They should always go into a proper socket, and I think they're much more reliable then. And then what I've done, if we come out here, and we go down here, I've got this here, which is a wireless access point, which is more central in the house. And so really the, the wireless is being picked up from there. I've still got it active on the airport extreme, and that's good for inside the office. I've also put a home plug in here for my kitchen Apple TV. Now previously I've been running this wirelessly and that worked okay. It would tend to start a program and then get to seven seconds and then start to sit there and think about it for a few seconds and then start going again, which is a bit weird. And there'd also be a very short delay before you start watching anything on, say, BBC iPlayer, for example. Uh, running this through the home plug, everything's pretty much instant and there's no holding back no delays i've only used it once so far since i've plugged this in yesterday so the jury's still out but early indications are promising uh, the thing that was a bit of a dilemma for me was the fact that as you can see i still have no back on this cabinet and the reason i have no back on the cabinet is because there's a fault with it uh, it's a solid piece of metal as you can see but at the top here and along the bottom down here, there should be knockout blanking plates to feed the cables. And this obviously didn't go through the machine correctly, and so there aren't any. And the manufacturers have told me that there's going to be a three to four week lead time to send me a replacement panel because they haven't got any in stock. They've got them, but they haven't got any with the acoustic foam in. So I'm going to have to wait for that to come. And I thought rather than waiting a month and using a slightly crippled network, I would go ahead put the switch in so at least I can set everything up and although it is a little bit messy 
uh, you know, at least I can use uh, the the network and and uh, sort of adding things on and and just generally moving forward with the whole project. So I will tidy all this up. My uh, my thoughts now are when once the the back has arrived, once the rear of the cabinet has arrived, I will pull a lot of this stuff out, tidy up more cables. See that over there, although the desk is okay, I've got a bunch of cables there. Um, inside is a little bit messy as well. I need to tidy all that up, make it look a lot better, a lot neater. And also I want to get on and label all the plugs at the back so I know what plug does what, and label all of these up as well, and uh, just generally improve the whole thing. But at least it'll work for now. And just to prove that those cables do actually go in, I'm going to shut the, hang on, put the key in while we're up, and shut that up, there we go, and you can see, yeah, okay, so it's, um, it, it's a little bit messy, but it, it, is, it does work, it does work. Uh, the other thing as well is I've now got everything in the UPS that I will want to, to have in there. So I've got my router, I've got uh, the VDSL modem plugged in there, the computer, the monitor and the RAID device are all inside my, all plugged in to, to the UPS. And what I will do is I will come over to my computer. Right, and I won't bother doing some screen sharing on here, I'm just simply going to have a look at the UPS. Uh, entry uh, on the Synology and if I now have a look on there it is saying 6120 seconds of estimated battery time and a quick calculation viewers uh, let's put that down there so quick calculation 6120 divided by 16 because I can't work it out myself is 102 minutes so that's not bad that's okay 102 minutes of, of time uh, I've also got this set on the Synology so that the uh, the disk station itself will shut down when uh, the, the low battery, when the UPS goes to low battery and then it will send a signal to the UPS to itself shut down as well, So, which is great. So that's all working well and nicely, thank you very much. So that's where we are, that's, that's kind of as far as I can get really at the moment until the back panel is here. So there will probably be another part to this video where I uh, take things out of the rack, tidy up the cabling and just generally make things look a lot neater. But we have, we have kind of made it, we've, we've, um, it's ticked all the boxes I think for what I wanted to do. I've got a lot more network capacity, I've got um, half the space still in the switch and the patch panel there for extra bits and pieces. I've got a lot of spare plugs at the back that I can use for power, uh, so that's good. So I've got all that extra capacity that I wanted. Uh, instead of being maxed out, I've now got room to expand, which is exactly what I wanted, and I've got some power back up there in the shape of the UPS. So, so I have achieved what I wanted to achieve. Um, I just need to tidy up the cables once, uh, once the panel uh, is here. So I hope you've enjoyed this network series. There will be more to follow, as I've said, and uh, please do put your comments below. I know that uh, network experts out there will be, will be hating me for what I've done here, but I'm not an expert, but it's gonna work for me, I think. Um, please do let some of your comments and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.